Most of the new players in the Tarkov community see someone rocking high-level armor and assume that they're nearly impossible to kill. For one reason or another, if they struggle to take down some of these juiced-up enemies, they often go searching for advice from their friends or their favorite content creators. More often than not, the blame is placed solely on the ammo used by the newbie. Dude, you, you can't use that. It's That's trash ammo. You need to use the good stuff. Sure, it's expensive, and I know that you're you know low on rubles because you're a newbie and, and all, but uh, trust me, it's worth it. Watch. See how fast I take down this dude wearing some of the best armor in the game. In less than one second, his armor is completely shredded, and he's dead. That's why investing in ammo, even something that costs around 900 rubles per bullet, is absolutely worth it. Wait, SP5. What? No, dude, that, that's SP5. Wait, wasn't that SPP? That had to have been SPP or something. Maybe at worst, SP6, right? There's no way that was SP5. It, it, it only has, like, 35 pen, and that was level 6 armor. SP5 is like 140 rubles per round. SPP costs like 900 a round. It costs six times more, so it's got to be six times better, right? Is it three times better? I mean, maybe at least like twice as good, right? Forget it. Let's let's compare them side by side. Maybe what we've all been taught about ammo has been a drastic oversimplification. We all reference the ammo charts, but do we really understand what the values in the charts really mean? It's my experience from talking to most people in the community that the answer to this is no. So let's all learn together, shall we? One of the most commonly discussed and debated topics in most Tarkov streams, especially mine lately, has been ammunition. Now I'm asked some variation of the question of what's the best ammo for this gun, probably a hundred times a stream every day. And more often than not, others in chat as well as many content creators will all answer the same one or two ammo types for each given caliber. It's my personal opinion that this question is much more complicated and a nuanced one that deserves more of a response than that. This question is one of those questions that makes it clear that the person asking it is doing so with a host of unstated assumptions and or that they are unaware of all the important considerations that make the right answer to this question something different depending on a host of factors that they aren't even aware of. Oversimplifying this topic down to which ammo has the most pen or the most damage can help people sort of blindly follow the meta and if that's what you want to know, look at the ammo charts. In my honest opinion, this sort of thinking is what leads these same folks into wondering things like, oh, well, I shot this guy six times with the Mosin and he didn't die, or I can't get the best ammo, so I just use flesh damage rounds and go for leg meta, or I'm sick of going to this specific map because it's full of cheaters. All I do is get one tap through my quarter of a million ruble helmet. Now, I'm of the opinion that giving a simple answer to a complex question is, for the most part, doing a disservice to the person asking the question if that person actually really wants to learn something. Now, following this philosophy of, you know, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, you feed him for life, here's my attempt at explaining all of the considerations that you should keep in mind for determining which ammo choice is the best for you. Once you understand all of the different factors related to how ammo performs in Escape from Tarkov, you'll be able to read the various ammo charts and wiki pages totally differently, and you'll actually be able to figure out for yourself which ammo is the best for you when wipes happen, when you're back to level one traders, you otherwise have limited options or limited funds. They completely rebalance the ammo values or add completely new ammo types and calibers to the game. You'll be set no matter what. Now, each bullet has a damage property, which like nearly all of the ballistic properties in the game are not provided to you in the game itself, but rather can be found on three primary places that I'll link in the description. You have no food after midnight's ammo charts, the Tarkov wiki, 
and inside my Battle Buddy mobile app. When a bullet impacts the body of an enemy, the damage value is applied to the impacted zone of the body, reducing the health points of that zone down by the same amount as the base damage value of the round. Now, if you guys are interested, I can put out another video where I go more in depth into how damage is distributed throughout the body, how overflow damage when a blacked out limb is hit, uh, some of the different modifiers and multipliers around uh, the different zones of the body and, you know, how that affects the damage distribution and, you know, in my opinion, some of the more uh, questionable, iffy, potentially, you know, borderline buggy uh, issues around health and, and damage and how they kind of work together. If you guys want to see that video, let me know and I can, uh, I can work on that for you as well because uh, I honestly, I think that that's super important. But yeah, I really don't want to get sidetracked too much with that, so uh, so I can come to that in another one if you'd like. Now, related to flesh damage, each round has an armor damage value, indicating how devastating that round is to armor upon impact. Now, this number is not a percentage. It's a separate value, just like the normal damage value, that's used in the armor ballistic calculations. Now, there are a number of variables used in the calculation of the resulting total damage that armor takes when impacted by a bullet including whether or not the armor stopped the bullet, uh, the material of the armor, the armor's durability, it's, uh, you know, the armor damage value of the bullet itself. Now, how these variables are applied is a bit of a black box, but for all intents and purposes, your takeaway from this should be that the higher the armor damage value, the more damage it'll do to armor, obviously. Different armor materials are more resistant to ballistic impacts and are also more effectively repaired. Uh, now i'll give you a quick visual from worst to best comparing the different materials and their current relative uh, values which i'll refer to as destructibility basically the lower the better now i've talked about penetration a few times in some previous videos which i'll toss some annotations on the screen for now um, but i'll give you a quick summary right now for how the ammo's penetration value and the armor's uh, armor class interact with each other armor classes range from one to six and ammo penetration values range from 1 to over 60. Now, a few simple rules of thumb will give you tons of information about how these numbers relate. Now, also note that I'll be rounding these values for simplicity's sake. So let's take class 3 armor, for example. First, to make the comparisons a bit simpler, let's divide the penetration values by 10. So anything with a penetration value of 20 on the, from the perspective of the bullet, we're just going to call 2. Uh, 30 pen, we're just going to say 3. 40 pen, we're just going to call 4 etc. Now, if the ammo's pen value is one less than the armor class, then there's about a 10% chance it's going to penetrate. If the adjusted pen value and armor class are the same, there's about a 90% chance to pen. And if the pen value is one more than the armor class, then there's about a 96% chance to penetrate. As you can see, these percentages aren't linear. As we go between each adjusted pen value, which again is something like 30 penetration to 40 penetration, so keep that in mind when comparing ammos, even if they have a few extra points of penetration. It's a minor thing, but it's worth keeping in mind that against class 3 armor, for example, the difference between ammo with 20 and 22 pen compared to ammo with 28 and 30 pen. Now the difference here amounts to two penetration points in both cases, but note the percentage differences when, you know, going from 20 to 22 versus 28 to 30. The closer you get to that round number threshold, the more each pen value is worth. So keep that in mind. All right, so what happens if the ammo does or does not penetrate? The easiest way to understand penetration, damage, and armor damage is to kind of show it in a simple matrix. If a round penetrates the armor, it'll have its flush damage value reduced slightly. But for the most part, it's going to do the majority of its original damage value to the underlying zone of the body and the round will do a relatively small amount of damage to the armor. Now conversely, if the round fails to penetrate the armor, as in the armor stops the bullet from penetrating to the flesh, it's gonna do a very small amount of blunt damage to the underlying zone of the body, you know, usually only a few points, but the armor is going to take more damage as compared to the previous example where it didn't stop the round. Every bullet has a fragmentation chance value, which is exactly what it sounds like. The chance for a round to fragment into multiple projectiles doing additional damage. You can think of this simply like a critical hit that does an additional 50% damage. For example, currently 556 by 45 millimeter M995 has a base damage value of 41 and a fragmentation chance of 32%. 
This means that roughly one third of the bullets that hit the enemy's flesh will fragment and do about 62 damage total. Now this can be a massively significant factor in firefights and is something that you should keep in mind when comparing different ammo options. Now beware here, it's extremely important to know that as of right now, fragmentation is bugged in a specific set of cases. If the round has less than a 20 penetration value, it will not fragment. This means rounds like the 12 gauge rip shotgun slugs will not fragment ever, even though they have a 100% fragmentation chance. Now, of course, this is subject to change at any time, but this has been an issue for quite a long time, probably at least a year, if not longer. So I have no reason to think it's gonna be fixed anytime soon. Now, the final ammo property I'll touch on briefly is the round's muzzle velocity. The muzzle velocity of the round will affect the bullet's point of impact compared to your point of aim, depending how different the velocity is relative to specified reference velocities. Put more simply, if the bullet is faster than the reference velocity, then those rounds will tend to land higher than your point of aim, whereas if it's slower than the reference velocity, it tends to land lower. I'll link my recent video here on zeroing and ammo where I go into far more detail on the subject for those of you guys who are interested. But the takeaway from this should be that the vast majority of rounds for a given caliber all have different but still relatively similar muzzle velocities with a few exceptions. For example, both 5.45 and 7.62 calibers have a number of different bullet variants, including US variants that have drastically lower velocities than the average bullet of the caliber and much less than the reference counterparts. So they can be very difficult to use at ranges even as close as 50 meters. Keep an eye on this velocity value and when you're able to, compare with other rounds of the same caliber to ensure that you're not deviating too much. You should be okay. So now, with all these variables in mind, let's take a look at some specific real-life, well, real Tarkov examples of how different ammos perform in different situations. And I'll walk through my thought process for weighing the pros and cons of each round so I can determine the best ammo for me in the current meta for most of the common situations I expect to run across right now. Now, as I mentioned earlier, most folks consider the best ammo the one with the highest pen value. And by now, at this point, you know I disagree. In order to objectively compare the different options available to us and get a realistic idea for how these rounds actually compare in terms of in-game performance when used in various firearms against different combinations of armor and with different accuracies and aim strategies, my preferred way of doing this is calculating the average time to kill, which I do using the ballistic simulation that I built into the Battle Buddy app. It's currently only on iOS, but at some point it's going to be on Android. Uh, trust me, I'm, I'm working on it as much as I can in my free time. So this simulation takes into consideration everything from fragmentation chance, armor damage, durability, damage reduction of rounds when penetrating armor, blunt damage, realistic aim distributions across various zones of the body, and how much damage is dispersed throughout the different zones when hit and blacked out and more. It is as close as I think anybody's ever come to uh, a one-to-one -one mapping of how you know these systems behave in the game, which allows us to objectively compare drastically different gun and ammo combinations against others in a fair and meaningful way. At the end, we can use this time to kill value in tandem with the current economic price of each round to determine what's best for us given the current meta and our budget. Let's start with a really interesting one first, the 762 by 54 millimeter round shot through a Mosin. Now to keep this from getting too long, let's limit it to the most common four rounds used for this caliber. 7N37, SNB, 7N1, and LPS. Starting off, let's compare their stats. 7N37 has the highest pen value in the game at 70, which is nuts. SNB sits up there as well at 62, 7N1 has a modest 45, and LPS is close behind at 42. Now as we go down in penetration, we tend to go up in damage, with 72, 75, 86, and 81 damage respectively. Note that although LPS has a lower pen and lower damage value compared to 7N1, it has more than double the fragmentation chance of each of its competitors. Now where things get crazy is the price, ranging from nearly 1,000 rubles per round down to under 200 rubles per round. Let's take a look at how they perform to see if the extra cost is really worth it. For this first example, let's assume a fairly reasonable average hit distribution. You'll be aiming center of mass, so most of the shots are going to be hitting the thorax and the stomach, but 
A lot of them are also going to be blocked by the arms, uh, the left arm being a slightly higher percentage typically because it's more out front on the, uh, the front of the gun, and a small percentage will hit the head. Now this is obviously not ideal, but it's a decent starting point to try to compare the performance objectively. Also note that I skipped level 1 armor as well as no armor because the results were honestly pretty much identical to level 2 uh, in how they performed in most cases, so it just wasn't worth the time. Now starting with 7N37, you're going to see this pattern throughout most of these tests. Because higher penetration ammo has a very good chance to penetrate even the highest tiers of armor, it's effectively like they weren't wearing armor at all, which is why there's virtually no difference in the time to kill between level 2 armor and level 6 armor. On average, it took about 4 seconds to kill a target regardless of their armor class. And moving on to SMB, the same results were observed with level 6 armor being the only exception averaging only one more shot to kill as compared to 7N37. So looking at 7N1, the additional damage but reduced pen leads to a faster time to kill below level 4 armor and a slightly higher time to kill against class 5 and 6. And finally, LPS performed comparably to 7N1, although again uh, against level 6 armor was the exception taking slightly longer. Now remember here that we're comparing rounds fired from a bolt action rifle that can take you know, a single shot every two seconds on average or something like that. So because these rounds are hand loaded one at a time, this allows for, you know, more flexibility in terms of how much ammo you can take with you and how much you can keep in your protector case. So it's a bit different from later examples that we'll get into where you have much more ammo and magazines to consider. So take a look at this graph and come to your own conclusions about what ammo is best for you. When I look at this data, it tells me a few things straight off the bat. Firstly, if I expect to be running into players with armor of class 4 or less, the cheapest of the options actually seems to be the best. It has the fastest time to kill, in common with 7 and 1, but costs nearly 4 times less. Now right now I find most people I come across are in the level 3 to level 5 armor class range, so LPS is still looking pretty damn good being the least expensive option by far and only being one more second time to kill. Now if I find myself running into heavily geared people running level 5 and 6 armor all the time, which isn't really common right now, but tends to be much more common typically in the, you know, weeks and days leading up to a new patch or a wipe, and either, you know, everything costs next to nothing or we all essentially have infinite money because of, you know, pre-wipe events and stuff, I would definitely consider rocking the more expensive ammo, although nearly doubling the price of SMB to get 7N37 to save one second time to kill is debatable. Again, this is up to you, there's no right or wrong answer because preferences differ between people, but you can't really make an informed decision about your options if you don't have information to back it up. So now let's consider the same ammo options, but let's see how changing some of the circumstances here changes the results. Rather than using a bolt action rifle, let's grab a semi-auto SVDS, and instead of having an average semi-random accuracy, let's assume that you're able to hit all of your shots on their thorax. Now between the improved accuracy and faster fire rate, the time to kill is cut drastically here, so that's why our y-axis range has been reduced from 0 to 10 as it was previously, now from 0 to 1. All of these are going to be basically taking a fraction of a second. So taking a look through all of them at once, we can see that in nearly every case, the time to kill is less than 2 shots, which happens in about a tenth of a second, with the exception of the two lower pen rounds against level 6, taking 0.2 and 0.3 seconds on average to kill, respectively. Now again, it's up to you to determine based on your experience, um, you know, your skill level, your finances, if the price difference is worth it for you. In this case, let's assume you're going to be taking six 20 round magazines with you. Now assuming worst case, that either you shoot all of the bullets or, you know, you die and lose all of the ammo, which happens quite a bit, honestly. The total ammo cost difference between 7 and 37 and LPS is almost 100,000 rubles. Now, if it's worth it for you to risk 100,000 rubles, potentially per raid, for the rare chance that you'll run into someone with level 6 armor and that fifth of a second is enough of a difference between winning and losing a fight, by all means, invest in that more expensive ammo. Nobody can tell you that you're wrong. It's purely subjective. If you're like me, you'd probably rather keep the 100,000 rubles in the bank and try your best to shoot people before they get a chance to shoot back so that fifth of a second isn't really important. Sometimes, that'll cost you. But honestly, I reckon in the long run, it'll pay off. All right, so I don't want this video to go on forever and don't want to do every single, you know, good round for every single caliber. So let's just do one more example and then we'll finish up. This should be enough to give you an idea for how to do this sort of thing for yourself, even if it's, you know, much more of a crude or simple version. 
Let's go back to the gun that we started this video off with, the AS Val. Let's return to using the more realistic hit distribution and examine four different rounds, BP, SPP, SP6, and SP5. Feel free to analyze this little chart that I have here. You know enough now to be able to you know, do that yourself. You don't need me to go line by line. But uh, just note the price difference between BP and SP5. And again, keep that in mind during this comparison. Also worth mentioning that the time to kill range here has been drastically reduced again, which should give you a hint at sort of the outcome here. BP takes between a tenth and a third of a second to down armor targets of varying armor levels. SPP performs virtually the same. SP5 is only slightly worse with a max time to kill against level 6 armor at 0.6 seconds, which is just a third of a second slower than BP, and SP5 performs nearly the same with only a tenth of a second on average longer uh, than SP6 against level 5 armor. Now I've been repeatedly told by people in my chat that I need to be running 30 round mags full of BP, you know, if not SPP. Um, you know, that it's expensive, but it's totally worth it. You know what? Maybe to you it's worth it. That's fine. But when I compare the price difference between the two options, BP with 30 round mags and SP5 with 20 round mags, I can get twice as much ammo for half the price. With the rate at which the Val burns through ammo, especially given that sometimes it takes like a whole mag to kill an enemy, and also the rate at which I die without even firing a single shot these days, compared to the number of times that I get into a straight up, you know, aim battle with someone and I died because I lost the, the time to kill race by a fraction of a second. It's ludicrous to me to even remotely want to spend that much cash on anything more than, you know, SP6 at most. Again, your mileage may vary. The entire point of this video is, again, not to tell you what to use or what's best, but instead to inform the community as to what they should keep in mind when they're comparing and choosing and recommending all these different bullets. By all means, keep running BP and SPP. I really don't mind looting it off of you and selling it back to you again on the flea market. So this was a video that I was planning on doing for quite a while now, and up until recently, I, I had the structure more or less down, but as of the result of a challenge from one of my closest community members and moderators, many of you know, Fluven, I had to take a step back, do some more research, and dig deeper into the subject to get a different, and in my opinion, clearer perspective. This is one of those rare situations where data and evidence has resulted in me changing my mind. Before these conversations and tests with Fluven, I admit that I had some misconceptions myself. I really do have to give him a, a huge, sincere thanks um, you know, for using a combination of curiosity and the tools and data at his disposal to kind of dig into this topic and propose something totally against uh, the grain. Now, one of the things I want to say too here is beware of folks who, after watching this video, are going to pretend as if they knew all along just how viable some of these budget alternatives were. Because while making this video, almost nobody in the community, including myself at the start, had this sort of perspective. Pretty much everybody I talked to, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago before this whole SP5 thing started to go around, Thought that SP5 was completely and utterly useless, was the worst round in the game, should never be used, um, and uh, I, you know, I, I think we're all uh, a little bit more enlightened here. Now that you hopefully have a much better grasp on the different ballistic properties in the game and how they interact, you can couple that with your knowledge of the current meta, your goals, the challenges you face, you know, personal preferences, and the state of your finances in the game, and make educated decisions about the different ammo choices you have at your disposal and how they stack up from a practical economical and effectiveness perspective hopefully you'll see now that tarkov at least how it is today is a game of diminishing returns in nearly all of the cases from armor to ammo every additional ruble you spend provides you a smaller and smaller benefit to your killing and survival potential if you're swimming in rubles and have you know no problem dropping fat stacks on extended mags full of the best shit go for it more power to you it'll most likely perform better and will save you you know some percentage of the time if not, don't fret, because now you understand how the different ammo offerings that are available to you, you know, even on a budget at level one traders, perform relative to the myriad of, you know, enemies and gear you're going to come across. Maybe you'll be able to find some middle ground somewhere, who knows? The purpose of this video, again, was to simply give you the knowledge and understanding you need to determine what ammo is best for you, what ammo is useless, what ammo is OP, you know, right now versus the current meta, as well as, you know, going forward in the future taking what's important and enjoyable to you in the game and combining that with, uh, you know, all of this information that I mentioned, that is really the only meaningful definition of, of best, in my opinion. So I hope that it helps you in your Tarkov journeys. Uh, thanks again, everybody.
you know, for, for all the love lately, for, uh, for Fluven, for helping me, you know, learn a little bit and with the testing, um, and, uh, and, you know, and everybody in the stream that, uh, that will hopefully never ask me again what the best ammo is. Yeah, thanks again for you guys sticking around to the end of the video. I know, uh, I know these long ones sometimes uh, are boring for people, but, uh, you know, I try, try to make them as clear, concise, but as thorough as possible. I want to, again, thank Fluven for, uh, for a lot of the information, you know, that, uh, that I learned here and for helping me test this out and destroying a bunch of his, uh, fort armors in the meantime. And, uh, you know, thank you again to everybody watching for all the love, uh, the comments, the subscriptions, everything. So we'll see you around. All right.